What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overlook here. So we're going to be talking about a few different horror topics here in this video today going over some of the horror news and updates we got over the past week. We'll be talking about The Exorcist and the future of The Exorcist after the Believer Travesty and in going into Deceiver and whatever the next one will be, I guess, after Deceiver Retriever maybe or Non-Believer. I don't know. <laughs> we'll be talking about Rennie Harling's, the, Rennie Harling's The Strangers Trilogy. We'll be talking about a Friday the 13th remake sequel flashback that was revealed over the weekend. And we'll be talking about Saw. 11 in the future of the Saw franchise. So just to start off with The Exorcist, The Hollywood Reporter reported that currently David Gordon Green has outlines for the next two chapters of his Exorcist sequel trilogy. And while he once had plans to co-write and direct all three chapters, he's not quite ready to say if he's definitely directing The Exorcist Deceiver or the eventual trilogy capper. In his own words, Green tells the outlet, this is coming from Bloody Disgusting, my intention is just to start making things and as those plans come together, if I find myself in that, the Exorcist Deceiver director's chair, I'd be thrilled. But right now, I'm navigating it from a story perspective and looking at my realities of life as I pivot. I will say this, if he's not directing, I wouldn't necessarily say that's a complete W. I again would truly like to remind everyone I don't think that the direction is the biggest problem with the exorcist believer. I think the biggest problem starts with the screenplay. Now, granted, did Green write it? Yes, he co-wrote it. But I think if Scott Teams is still involved, then we're still going to have a problem. Not that Scott Teams wrote the screenplay, but the screenplay apparently came from the came from the story that was based off of what scott teams had written up I, I believe is what was reported so if scott teams is still involved creatively i'm probably going to still be on the fence about deceiver regardless of who's directing it not to say that the, a better director couldn't make it make it any more impressive but if scott teams is still there i'm still just going to be side eyeing it because i just do not like some of the stuff scott teams does granted not all of his movies are train wrecks but firestarter 100 percent his worst and then i know people have their ups and downs with the latest insidious and scott teams again was involved with this he was involved with halloween kills so we'll just have to wait and see jumping into the strangers rennie harlan's comments on the strangers recently with bloody disgusting goes as follows talking about the future of the trilogy after this uh first movie he says, so not to trivialize or spell it out too much, the second and third movies are an exploration of where does this come from. More than anything, they are the exploration of what could happen to a person, in this case, a young woman, who is the victim of such senseless violence. What does that do to you mentally and physically? And what's your journey after that? It's an exploration, an exploration of that more than anything. And I think we will answer a lot of the questions the fans of the original have and then go far beyond that. By the end of the third movie, there are more questions than answers, really. I can't wait to make the next three movies. So he seems to be teasing another set of movies after this upcoming trilogy. He says he can't wait to make the next three because I just think that we do something so interesting here. Personally, I can't wait to see where it goes after this. Now, his comments sound good to some degree. And in other areas, like earlier on in the comments, I see why some people are concerned that they might have missed the point of that original film since they want to explore reasoning and answer questions that are existing from that original. Granted, that doesn't mean that the trilogy can't be phenomenal, especially after that clip that was adequate enough for me. Uh, the clip that was released had tension that's constantly swelling. Madeline seems to be doing her thing. And the tension tactic of constantly just using that to swell in the scene that's always going to be better than using a cheap jump scare which they do not do they just allow the tension to swell they allow madeline's performance and her facial expressions to really get you sunk or let you sink into the or be immersed in the overall tension of it all and then the music that's chiming in and of course the nods to the first one saying is tamra here or is tamra home i like that uh, I thought it was an adequate enough clip. Could they have released a better one? Sure. I'm sure what we see of the film going forward will be great. But what do you guys think about the Strangers clip and this awesome new poster as well? It seems, again, that he's suggesting we could have more movies after this initial trilogy. What do you think could happen in the future of the Strangers franchise? Now, the remake writers of Friday the 13th revealed a scrapped flashback scene that would have occurred during the sequel to the 09 movie. 
I'll leave a link to the tweet in the description for you guys to check it out. It's a flashback of Pamela and Elias discussing sending Jason away because they aren't equipped to take care of him at their cabin. Pamela seemingly agrees with this plan initially while talking to Elias outside because she tells Elias, you're right, it's for the best. Elias prepares to tell Jason about their plans that he's discussed with Pamela to get Jason the proper care away from this cabin. And then Pamela surprisingly turns on her husband, killing him with a shovel a shovel blow once to the head and then a second one to finish a job before blood splatters all over her face she turns to jason and says don't worry everything's going to be fine now jason she then proceeds to take elias down into a cellar the screen pages seem to suggest and buries her husband then goes over to jason rubs his little deformed face and tells him this is his home and she will do anything to keep him safe and she knows that he'd always return the favor for her which we've seen them do quite quite a lot in the franchise jason more than her since she's dead that was just an interesting couple of pages to read and i'll leave a link again to the tweet in the description for you guys to check out the complete context of it but again that's a scrap flashback sequence that could have appeared in a sequel to that old nine i i want to call it a reboot it's not even a complete remake it's more of a reboot diving into saw 11 saw 11 and the future of the franchise which has yet to be greenlit had an interesting comment update from Kevin Grudert recently when speaking to Screen Rant. He said, well, we just have to wait wait to see what the future of Saw is. There are so many directions we could go. But for me, there's no obvious one coming out of this film. I really wanted it to feel like a kind of final send-off for the Jigsaw character, but never say never. As far as that actor speaking to, uh, I forgot his name, the little boy featured in the finale with John and Amanda, said he's such an amazing little gentleman. I think he has a huge career ahead of him and I would love to work with him again. Now, honestly, his comments suggesting he wanted to feel like a final send off convinces me that that's obviously, again, what they were going into that mindset for for Tobin Bell's character, at least. And I'm glad if we don't see Tobin Bell's character again, I would be OK. It does make me think, though, that somehow Saw 11 is going to be an Amanda centric story. And that's what they will try to hone in on the most for Saw 11. But would you guys be down for that or would you prefer to see a story picking up in present time again? Possibly not in Saw 11, but in Saw 12, because they're clearly, I would say, going to make more of these movies. And I think what they're trying to do is maybe tell a little bit more of a story with John's apprentices going forward and then leave Tobin Bell out. If Tobin Bell is included, it just won't be as heavily centered on him the way Saw X was, which is why I think it works as a good final send off for Tobin Bell. Let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, and there's a video in the description. I have links to my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.